Hello and welcome, PML fans. I'm your host, Admin Joe here. And I am here with the coach of the Toronto Tyranitars, Morgan Higginbotham. Yeah, you said it right this time. <laughs> How's it going? I'm going good. How have you been? I'm doing good, man. All right. Let's go ahead and kick it off with the first question of this interview here. What made you want to join a draft league? I have been in... I think every draft league we've done since uh, the group has started. So I don't know. I like having – they're a lot of fun, well-organized draft leagues. So I like coming back. And when you entered your first one, what drew you to it? Um, You did, actually. You had uh, – the, the team logos was really cool gimmick. Everybody gets their own custom team logo uh, based on, like – uh, professional sports teams, so that's a pretty unique thing that most groups don't do. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, so let's move on to the second question. Obviously, you've been in uh, draft leagues before. What drew you to the PML draft specifically? Um, uh, I'm an admin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, that's the only answer I have. I don't know. If, I don't know. I'm an admin. I'm just here, baby. All right. What What do you like best about our unique uh, draft league that we've set up here? Uh, they are the best, the most organized, most consistent draft leagues that I've seen. Uh, we always keep them going. They don't. If they do, somebody drops. We always find somebody to fill it. So. I don't think we've ever had any completely fall through, so that's the lure to me is it's steady and consistent. We have a ladder uh, that you can climb. I, I don't know. It's, it just seems like professionally uh, competitive to me. It's it, it just seems professional. All right. Well, those are all good answers there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we move on to the next question here. What do you hope to accomplish strategically with your team? Um, I tried to bring a lot of versatility uh, when I was picking my picks. I tried to pick several things that could work together, several mods that could do different things. So I want to try and bring something different each game. I don't want you to be able to think like, think, know what I'm going to do. So uh, that's my goal versatility versatility and yeah uh, surprise people <laughs> and um i know the video of the grades came out today and you got to hear what uh the analysts had to say about really utilizing trick room on your team and i know when you were drafting you said you weren't really going to be doing that as much um yeah do you feel <laughs> they swayed your opinion on that or are you still sticking Not to your all. guns I mean, Trick Room is, I mean, you know that I like Trick Room, but to me, uh, Trick Room's too hard to uh, maintain in singles. I like Trick Room a lot in doubles, but I did not pick this team with Trick Room in mind. Um, I'm more picked bulk. I'm not going to go into sets and stuff like what I want to do, but I, uh, I, I mean, I didn't pick Trick Room, like pick with Trick Room in mind, but of course Trick Room is an option looking at the team, but in my opinion, Trick Room is too hard to maintain in singles in my personal experience, so I don't really run it. It's it's too, I mean, if you're in singles, you have to bank on it pretty much. I feel like you, you have to bank on it, and if you can't get it set up, it's it's shitty, so uh, that's I, nobody swayed my opinion. I have other things planned. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next topic here, and it's um, which Pokemon did you draft that you think will have the biggest impact on your season? Um, hmm. um, either either Grimmsnarl or Sigilyph. <laughs> um, Sigilyph. What I led the last time, the last singles draft that we had, um. I led the league in, or maybe it was the draft before last, but I led the league in kills with Jalith, and I think he's super underrated, and uh, most people overlook him. So uh, maybe we can pull that out. Hello? Yeah, you there? 
Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, you cut out for a second. You were in the middle of saying the, something. Yeah, it's drop action. What did you, where did you stop me at? You said uh, you had the kill leader uh, a couple j leagues ago and you were trying to hope to get it back to somewhere. Yeah, last last time I had Sigil, if I, I led the league in kills, so I'll see if uh, we can do I think he gets overlooked a lot, so we'll see if we can pull something like that out again. Or maybe Grimmsnarl, because Grimmsnarl's... I've got several sets for him. He's super versatile, super bulky, hits like a truck. Maybe Grimmsnarl. <laughs> yeah, and um, I also um, heard from other coaches this past season that you actually use Greedent to a very... Very successful way, and I hope yeah. to see that in battle this season. Yeah, he's a, he's super underestimated too. I didn't I didn't know how good he was, but uh, this last draft league, I picked him up, and it was the first time I'd used him. And I mean, he looks like a serial character or something, but <laughs> <laughs> dude, he's he's good. He's got some good sets too. I I really like the belly drum set I've seen run on him. He's really bulky, yeah. so he could take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. There's another really cool set too that I'll you'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I know. I just know that uh, what's it called? The cheek stuff ability. Cheek pouch. Yeah, stuff cheeks and cheek pouch. He's got a special move. Uh, he's got a signature move, and then he's got his ability. So signature ability. Yeah, and uh, yeah. the person I fought today, he actually used a uh, belly drum. Got to have health, uh, ate a citrus berry, and then with its ability, it got him all the way back up to full health. Yep. Yeah, it's super sick. So very cool. It's certainly gonna be yeah. interesting. Stuff cheeks also raises his defense up to the stuff to the whatever the move is called. He has a move where he can eat his berry early, and uh, he gets the effects of the berry and so heals more. So and raises his defense. But it's it's pretty sick. He's he's an underrated Pokemon too. Man, maybe I shouldn't have moved it to tier five. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's super chunky. I don't know why you did that. <laughs> you should have used him, man. All right. Well, um, let's see. Moving on to the next question here. Um, what team do you think will be your biggest challenge this season, and why? Um. Hmm. You know, everybody is worried about uh, Danny's team, and uh, I've, I mean, I've never seen Danny play. Have you ever played Danny? Uh, no, we didn't get a chance to last time we, we set up a league. Wait, who, which team is he? He's not Drake of Vish and whatever, is he? No, he's no, not the water he's team, the, is he? He's the LA Needle Kings. Yeah, I don't remember what he has. Um, he has a, he has a uh, bunch of good versatile minds. He has Cinderace and... Azumarill and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, honestly, my I'm not really worried about anybody's team necessarily because you can have the the best team. It doesn't matter. I'm more worried about coaches. Um, most people have not played in PML here before, um, so I don't know who to be worried about. I know to be worried for you, and uh, I know to be worried for Sylvester, but I mean, I don't know anybody else, so I know Devin's good. So I really don't know who to be worried for. I guess just you. <laughs> yeah, we always seem to have a big clash. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, if I looked at the schedule correctly, we are a good middle of the season battle as well. Yeah, yeah. I got Danny uh, week one, so we'll we'll see him. Yeah, they they have us ranked one and two, and we battle at the last week of the season. So nice. Right before we'll playoffs, see how that. Will be interesting. I I will say Danny seems uh. He's got a good speaking voice. He just seems like he knows his shit he, he, when he talks. He, he, he's he got it. He, I, I can tell he's good. So maybe I'm a little worried for Danny, too. All righty. And we'll go ahead and close off this uh, this interview with one final question. That's not Pokemon related at all. But Stuart asked it to me, and I've been asking everyone since because it's a pretty off-the-wall <laughs> question. All right. If you had a superpower that you know, an unconventional superpower. So not like super strength, not flying. But, you know, like for me it was I could summon my favorite foods whenever I wanted to. What was what would yours be? Oh. Um shit. Um 
I don't know. <laughs> I would be able to... Uh, damn, dude, the food one's pretty good, but I can't take that. I would... I don't know, man. Hold on, hold on. You got to give me a second. Oh yeah, you got time. Give me, give me other examples. What, are, what did everybody else pick? Um, Joe picked. Uh, he could have an endless bowl of whatever he wanted, so it can't be Damn. money or anything like that. But it could be like fruit, chips, or you know, other things that go in bowls. Cereal. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I would be able. I have a box of cereal that filled with whatever cereal I wanted. You know, I love cereal. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big, yeah, that's exactly what I would have. I, I would be cereal man, and I would uh, create cereals <laughs> All right. with my magic box. Well, that's a good, fun question to end off on. Uh, you have anything, <laughs> anything you want to say to the fans out there before I let you go? Um, Speak softly and carry a big spoon. <laughs> All right, carry that big spoon, and you'll see the Toronto Tyranitars in two weeks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See you guys next time. See ya.